Uh, so yeah, hey everyone, welcome you all to the channel and in this particular video we are going to create a vending machine smart contract. So basically what the main agenda of creating the vending machine smart contract is that anyone, uh, any customer can come and he can buy some sort of candies like we are going to create it for her, you know, candy, candies and all, uh, so candy store and he can come and buy the candy from there by paying some sort of ether. Right, so without wasting any time, let's get started with it. And we are going to see a lot of things while creating this smart contract. So, uh, first and foremost, what you need to know is, you know, uh, this is the Remix ID which I'm using currently. Okay, so how you can get into it is just go on and search for Remix IDE. Then you will find uh, a link. You can click on it, and the page will look like this. Simply go on and click on the Start Coding Online button, and you will be, you know, landing over to this page. So let, let me give you just a very simple tour of it. You know, it's your workspace area or you might have worked on Visual Studio Code. So there also we have some certain kind of this pane over there. And other things that uh, you get with this are this compiler button. And then there's a deployment, you know, and then we deploy our smart contract so that we can use it and see it in live action. Okay, so um, this is our main file explorer what we are going to do for now is going to click this this contracts folder there I have got three sample smart contracts what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rename it and uh, just rename it to vending machine uh, vending machine dot soul uh, dot soul is for you know solidity right now this is my vending machine dot soul Okay, so there we have a SPDX license identifier. What actually it does is, you know, if you're going to have, you know, uh, it to be an open source one. So this defines which kind of license you're going to use. Then we have something called as Pragma. Uh, I'm not liking the color. Let me just change it. Okay, so yeah. Then we have Pragma. It, it allows a person, you know, to just figure out and use what all features are being provided by the compiler. Right, and there's something very important about it. It actually works on the local, right? And it's not like that you have written it onto the another contract and you have inherited it onto another contract, then you won't be requiring it. It's not like that. You need to write this pragma line in each and every contract that you are going to create. This works on local area, right? Oh, so sorry, not local area, I would say, but it works only locally and is limited up to that only smart contract that you are creating, right? For this, this pragma uh, would help us only in this contract okay so now uh, what are more into this uh, so we are not going to worry about what actually all the stuffs are there what I only need is I'm going to have this pragma over here uh, let me remove everything and have this contract uh, so yeah let's just remove each and every stuff from here and let's change the name it to uh, vending machine vending machine okay now let's get started with it okay so now uh, let us define what actually are going to be our variables that we require while creating this so first and foremost we are going to have a owner variable uh, which will help us and other customers to know to whom actually this smart contract is going to belong another can be uh, we can have a candy variable right so candy variable is going to do what is for example there's a person right and he bought for example let's say 10 candies now what actually is going to do is we are going to create a connection between this person and these 10 candies in such a way that we can find out like if uh, so when we work on the blockchain world you know we use addresses right so we need a way how we can connect this address with the number of candies the person a certain address or a person is going to hold right so this 10 actually is going to be a uh, integer type and in solidity for showing up the only positive values we use uint right unsigned integer right so we need a way of connecting these both things so we simply use what we call it as a mapping and by mapping you can think of it as if you might have used python or any other language so in python it basically actually is like you know dictionaries right so we are going to create a mapping of candies and what what all other things that we need are another things that we need to work on are functions right what are all the functions that we are going to create are like you know purchase so that anyone can come and purchase the items 
another thing that I can uh, remember is we can also create you know who the owner actually is right you know so and okay that's not very important like getting the who is the owner but yeah what other thing that can be important is get how much candies are there in our vending machine or the smart contract and uh, what other things can we create or we can uh, also do is like for example if every candy is you know sold and our owner wants to add new candies right so he can restock or refill the vending machine so we are going to create three functions into in this smart contract and one more thing that we need to keep in mind is this restock option right it can only be used by the person who is the owner right because I, if if i'm the customer i don't have you know any ability to re fill or restock the vending machine right only the owner has got the ability to do that right another thing is uh, that we need to make it as a only accessible to owner okay so now let's get started with coding each and everything now first of all let's talk about this owner right okay i will just get hands on with the coding right now okay so i need to create a owner variable like, like this we simply define into python but uh, let's say we need more right we need owner to be a type of address right and it's already we have got a keyword address which shows that uh, now the owner is of type address like you know or how actually the addresses looks like so if there would be some yeah you can see this is the address type you know this is this long you know it's maybe i guess 64 characters long right so this is the address of the owner or any person who is going to work with this smart contract okay okay let me do one more thing is let me create a public let me create it as a public variable because when we create public variable there's automatically a get a function that is assigned to a variable right so like uh, we can have a public now externally also we can uh, call directly the owner and we can have the address of the person who owns this smart contract okay now next we talked about having a candy variable right so what actually candy was going to do is it was going to map or create a connection between the address right between the address and as well as between the number of candies a person is going to hold right so let's say it's it is like you know a uh, mapping we use a right, data type mapping and in uh, mapping we are going to do is we are going to have address to be mapped with the number of candies right this is how we do it and yeah let's again try to create as a public right uh, it will automatically assign a beta function to it okay now what we are going to do is uh, we are done with these two part that is owner and the candy part now what we are going to do is we are going to assign them their initial values right okay so we are going to create a constructor uh, it's same as you know in other programming language how it works in other programming language it's generally same right so with the constructor we have the owner uh so now with the owner what we are going to do is we are going to use a global variable right so global variables are you know some kind of a special kind of variables and they generally hold the information related to the transactions and also related to the blockchain right so we are going to use a global variable that is msg.sender so what actually this msg.sender is going to do is it will provide me the address of the person who has deployed this smart contract and onto the blockchain right when our code got gets you know when our smart contract gets compiled right what actually happens is it it creates two files for us right both are json based right it create two that are abi and one is bytecode and this bytecode is something that actually gets deployed onto the blockchain are you getting the point uh this is simple thing that you need to keep in mind. Now, what this msg.center is going to do is, when this smart contract is being deployed by a certain address, for example, 0x5a67 dot 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 dot, whatever be the numbers are, right? When that person is going to deploy it onto the blockchain, this msg.center will provide that particular address to this owner, right? See, this person was the one who deployed it, so he is going to be the owner of this, right? I hope you got it, what actually it's going to do and i talked about having you know a global one right and we have and we have an, an, another type as well right uh, what actually it is so you might be seeing these two 
these are inside the contract but outside any of the function so these are called the state variables right these are the state variables and these are actually stored on the blockchain right and we have local variables those don't get stored on the blockchain those are only working till the function is working right they are there till the function is working okay so we don't need to worry about this much more right now okay let me remove these and everything from here or uh, let uh, okay so we can have these okay now we have done for the owner and now what we are going to do is at, at the same time we need to have some sort of values uh, or some sort of candies initially into our vending machine otherwise how the people are going to buy them okay so we have like you know candy uh, can, <coughs> candy we can have its address this is going to be let's say it's going to have you know 50 candies in the initial uh, okay now what this line actually means is address this address this means this talks about the smart contract you know this is smart contract like this smart contract is going to have how many number of candies right so the whatever be the address of this smart contract you know connect it with number of candies total equal to 50 right this is what this line actually means over here right uh, address this is a way uh, that came after the, I guess the version number 0 0.5 or something I guess you know in that particular time we got this new address type of this variable use okay uh, this keyword now let's see more to it okay then we talked about having some sort of functions like purchase right okay now first of all let's create this purchase function okay so function function purchase okay now when we are going to have this function purchase what we are going to do is we are going to receive the number of uh, candies a particular person wants so in the same way right you went is for the unsigned integer type we need the amount of candy that we need amount of candy let's say okay candy amount of candy a particular person want in that case be public public why because we need a get a function for this and one need uh, one thing that you need to keep in mind is we are going to create it as a payable right payable what actually the payable keyword actually means here is you know uh, this means that this function can either receive or it can transfer the ethers into any account or get it from any sort of account this is what the payable means and now we need is uh, if someone bought right some sort of amount so what you can do is you can do is uh, we have the candy one right candy and address this decrement right make a decrement into the number of candies this smart contract is holding and remove how much candies do I want to remove is the amount of candy which someone else is going to buy right so that is amount candy got it right it's very easy and what I want to do is the candy data to be stored by the person you know that's the person who bought those should get increased right uh, how much by how much amount candy right by this much but there's a catch right how is it going to know on which address do I need to do we already talked about this msg.sender what it actually is the person who is working on the contract right who is making a call on the contract so that is the same image dot sender okay uh, you don't need to get uh, confused in this you know it's not that tough because when i am doing this part right it is going to work when the smart contract is going to be deployed and this is going to give me the address of the person who is going to initiate or invoke this particular function it's simple and at this moment address this is going to me to give the address or you know the mapping from this particular smart contract right it's as simple as that as it seems okay let me remove these markers and okay let me get back to it okay but there's again a catch over here right uh, let's say the vending machine doesn't have the enough amount of the candies that you know the particular person is asking for or requesting for so we need to have condition for that as well another thing is for example if are per candy cost three ethers right and the person isn't having that amount that much amount of ethers that he need to buy certain amount of candies 
let's say he has 10 ethers and he wants to buy 10 candies so 10 threes are 30 for example 10, 30 ethers but he has only 10 ethers right and in this case what is going to have is we are not going to sell him those candies right so we need two conditions right here so we use the keyword called require it's simply like you know if this condition is going to happen then you can uh, you know use or run the other statement that, that are written in that particular function okay first of all require is msg.value okay value is the amount of stuff that is being paid uh, by a person okay msg.value whatever these are these are the global variables and these work on the blockchain and transactions right msg.value is going to give me the value the uh, person is going to pay for buying some sort of candies okay uh, i want these to be greater than i guess uh, for per candy if i'm going to charge him three ethers right let's say three ethers so msg.value so the value he's going to provide is should be you know way greater than that otherwise there will be a message um minimum uh, of three ether per candy you know there are a lot of candies you know any candy can be of different different values right okay another thing is that uh here i haven't written anything right so it currently is meaning three way right but i don't want to work with way because you know there will be a tons of zeros in that right so i'll have simply the ether with it associated so i don't want to go with you know 10 raised to the power 18 zeros with it right i don't want to go with that sort of hustle i want to keep it as simple as possible okay now it's completed uh now we have provided uh the problem for the you know customer right you know he should have greater than three but what about the vendor does he really have that much amount of candies that he want to buy okay so let's say require um we can have candy and the same thing right uh that we did previously that address this you know the amount of candies in this particular contract should uh, i would say be greater than the amount candy right amount candy if that is not the case then uh, we can simply have a message that out of stock come again later right come again later getting uh, as simple as that as simple as it seems okay now our purchase uh, function is completed uh, congratulations now let's go on to create the get candy function right okay. this is completed we hit the mark okay now let's get on to the get the total number of candies that our smart contract have okay uh, okay see uh right now function get candy amount right so it's not going to ask for anything from the you know customer right because uh, it's something that is into the smart contract right so we are going to create a public one and uh, we are going to have it as a view function right uh, but view are view means you know this can read the values from blockchain I think I have I said it right and uh, this is going to return some sort of value uh, so we use returns right don't forget about s and uh, what it's going to return is a integer value right the amount of candies that we have on our smart contract and now it's going to return something uh, don't keep s now right we only need uh, s over here right when we are specifying on to the function header return uh, what it's going to return is um, candy in this address this right simple this we have used now a lot of times right it's very simple now now to use it again again okay now we have created this contract or this function as well now what we're going to do is this is done now the last item is left and the last function is left out okay let's code it without any wasted time 
it's also very simple uh we can do is uh, see there are two ways right uh, you can use the require as we have used over here or you can also create a modifier for that right so i would i won't prefer modifier over here because i need to do that you know for only one function right but in case you are having a smart contract where you are having uh, multiple functions for the person who is the owner right in that case i would suggest to go on for the modifier because you don't need to write you know that require line again and again only just you need to mention that modifier at the function header and there you go okay so in this video let's go with the require function uh, require keyword again okay now restock or refill whatever be the case uh, whatever you want to create the name okay now uh, i want it to be public now if uh, owner wants to restock he need to provide some sort of amount of candies that he want to restock okay so what we need to do is we need to provide in, uh, some sort of values like you know um, restock G O C K restock and e okay let's have it i know it's not looking that good as a variable name but let's have it for the timing uh, require uh now what i want is the person who is calling this function is he the owner right now how do we get the value of the person right what i said we want to now check is the person who is calling this particular smart is function is he actually the owner or not how are we to do is first of all we need to get the uh, address of the person who is uh, calling this right how we do it using the msg dot sender right now with whom are we going to check it with the owner getting my point right now what we are going to do is we are simply going to come here and have it done like msg dot uh, sender is equal to equal to owner if this is the condition then it's very good but if not then access denied simple and once the access is provided or the he the person calling this function is really the owner then what should happen is my the number of candies in this smart contract should increase right how i'm going to do is same candy uh we have this address this and i'm going to make an increment so sorry i just uh, no uh yeah this and not amount uh amount was below restock candy i hope you got uh what whatever things we did till now and with this said we have completed our smart contract you know um it's not that tough to write this a smart contract uh, i hope you also understood what all features did we use what all things we had done into this okay now it's time for us to you know compile our smart contract so let's uh, so we'll, let us just do that okay now i'm here uh, i don't have my mouse right now uh, so sorry for that you know it's a bit problematic for me as well okay now i have this vending machine i'll go to the yes compile vending machine dot so i'll just go on and compile it or is it a bit expected this constructor uh let me just check it out but okay yeah i just forgot to mention this okay now again i'm going to compile it okay now it's all perfect now there are some sort of times that we get into warnings or into some sort of errors but we should definitely know how we are going to tackle those right uh you might be knowing i already told you like you know there are two types of things that we would definitely see when we compile that is avi and byte code what actually these do is avi is abstract binary interface right with the interface you might be knowing like interface are used to create a connection and with the word byte code or byte code you might have heard it in java as well uh, byte code is something that actually gets deployed onto the blockchain and in java also the same thing is same thing going, you know is going like you know byte code is something that actually gets uh, executed and here byte code is something that actually gets deployed onto the you might say you use ethereum mainnet you would be using some sort of testnet regarding to be ever you know there are, there are a lot and ABI it helps you to create a connection between two different smart contracts or more okay uh, now we have successfully compiled our smart contract 
now let's go and uh, try to deploy it right okay uh, i just uh, make this screen a bit bigger for us to view each and everything very easily right okay so what is this environment you know these are uh, virtual broad blockchains this injected provider is metamask this you know it it takes you to the test network or you can even use your uh, original or the main net ethereum wallet if you have real ethers to try it out right but i won't uh, suggest you that people that so let's just be on the remix vm london okay and there are, are you can see a lot of addresses that you can find out over here and now let's click on this 100 ethers one so gas limit uh let's not talk about it okay now 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 um perfect now deploy now let's click on the deploy button everything goes fine i think uh, my internet problem uh let me just delete it again uh as soon as i clicked on the deploy button you would see it originally was on the 100 but now it's less okay let me deploy it again ah perfect now it's deployed again clicking over here now you can see we have everything that we originally had from here okay what i said uh by creating it as a public owner will get its get a function right you know we can directly have an access to owner for example uh this at this moment this 0x5b was a person who deployed it right if i would click on the owner i'll get the same address right like you can see 0x5b and like ddc4 you can just check it over here ddc4 right this is the person who deployed it getting okay now i got it like now let me be a customer for example and uh, i have let's say this ab8 address right i am the person now i came to this vending machine and now let me just check the how much candies do we have actually in this like, let us see it is 50 right as we have provided they are going to be the 50 candies into this smart contract uh, okay so what this candy actually was doing um, perfectly fine perfectly fine everything is going well okay now let me just purchase some sort of candies i came here i want to purchase let's say i want to buy two candies and two into three that is six i want i have to pay six ethers i'll go on and uh, no this is way we want to work with ethers right let me change it to ether and for the value let me provide it i'll give him seven okay now i'll as soon as i click on the purchase button i will able be there's a tick now i purchased them right now hi how i am going to know that i purchased it and it actually has happened okay so now let's go on and try to copy this address that is the customer's address and this candy what was going to do is this candy has mapped the address with the number of candies he hold right now if i would go on and click on this candy button i'll be able to see that i bought two candies and at the same time you can see he has paid some sort of amount right you would see that the amount paid uh, deducted right is going to be way more than he actually costed it right why because there's a gas price as well that is to be paid by the one who is going to invoke the particular function okay now uh, let us say say we want to restock it getting okay so let's say we are going to restock it for example now we have a third customer he comes and uh, now he comes and he wants to restock it right he wants to add 12 candies to it but this can't be approved right because access denied you know we had already created it as a only on only on a kind of function like you know only the owner is a person who can uh, you know restock the smart contract okay now let's change our address back to the owner and now i want to restock 12 now if i do that it's going to happen and 
this candy was something else and this get get candy amount this is going to be again 60 back to 60 like initially we had uh, 50 now we have uh, 60 60 candies with the smart contract are you getting the point yeah so this is all about you know creating your vending machine smart contract and you can do your own creativity you can also you can create some sort of new items into it you know if you are creative enough um, 